guess I have a couple of questions. So we put in this low calorie menu, and we do education, and we're still selling Big Macs, because lots of people like Big Macs, and people are still fat, and our profitability goes down. Next door, there's a Burger King, and on the other side of the building, there's here, uh, Carl's Jr. And if the people like the taste, and some people, that, that's their only meal for the day, you know, a lot of times. If the people like the taste of it, and the people still eat the high calorie foods and the high sodium foods, a Big Mac, you miss the sodium piece because you're too young to understand what sodium does to your blood pressure. But it has like two grams of salt in it. Um, if they eat some of the, the low calorie stuff, but, but overall the problem isn't solved, you still got fat people. Is, how is that socially hooked up to what we're trying to do as a company? Well, we chose the initiatives that we chose because we feel that Right now, with the current value meal plan that we have, where we say it's cheaper to get a sandwich, fries, and soda together. Right. Okay. That so. emphasizes the consumer choice to, to buy that, to get the more, to get what we recommend. Got it. Okay. So you would, you would have family meals that would have an option to have something different. You've got to be kind of careful that we don't want to advertise this one as a healthy family meal because it's like the old army problem where they start calling things smart bombs and we got away from that we called it precision guided munitions because everybody thought the rest of the bombs were done. You, you can't be, this is healthy, this is unhealthy, you can't do that. Well, and the hope is to merge this two together and mm -hmm. say you can still have some of this, but specifically like we would like to do this. One fry, one carrot, one dipper, one mm -hmm. apple slice. And then within the family you can sort of divvy it up. Also the key is awareness about what because some of the products, it, for a while, there was more calories in our salads than actually mm -hmm. in Big Mac. Mm -hmm. So we need to make our consumers know what's, what is in their best interest to be eating and how to integrate it into, like if they are dieting or if they are trying to lose weight, what is the best option to take. And we have to make it feasible for them to come to us to. And also, you address the issue of profitability. If people don't come to McDonald's just for the Burger King, the consumer sentiment is changing. You can see the proliferation of the South Beach diet and the Atkins diet. People are becoming more conscious of what they're eating, especially because obesity <coughs> is such an issue. And so, hopefully, in, in the long term, consumer sentiment will change and everyone won't want to eat a Big Mac. And so, we need to anticipate for that change now. And in the long run, it probably will be more profitable for us if we can offer healthy initiatives instead of just hamburgers. You pointed out that, that the majority of the issue has to do with this with the relative level of education and poverty. The correlation is there. Do you think that people with lower levels of education and lower levels of income will become as aware of, as the, the crazy people running around the South Beach diet in the, in the supermarkets? I we don't necessarily believe that they'll become as health crazed mm -hmm. as some others. However, it's just about providing the basic <coughs> nutritional skills for making good decisions okay. for the most part. Mm -hmm. We're not about creating, you know, health nuts. We just want them to be able to get the meal that they need quickly and affordably without it having any detrimental effects in the long run. I have two questions. Uh, first of all, thanks for your presentations. Yeah, you guys have been done. Thanks. Anyway, um, my first question, uh, like many you know, truly global companies with rather mature business plans, uh, the majority of the buyers study of their dollars revenue actually comes from outside the United States, and they mentioned Canada. <coughs> and, and so I guess my first question would be, the, recommendation, the recommendations you've made, do they apply just for our business in the United States and Canada, or would they apply for, for all of our regional business as well? Well, let's go, oh, let's go fast. Just look, we have a copy of the tech here. Okay. Okay. Um, the U.S. makes up uh, the U.S. and Europe make up a substantial portion of the revenues 
And so you're asking if our plan can be implemented in other nations? Yes, yeah, so if your recommendations would apply just for just for you know, US and Canadian or US only market or Our apply recommendations for all only apply for the United States. Okay, good. And okay. part of the reason is because the obesity epidemic is most serious in the United States. Okay. Okay. And um, it looks, it looks like you're familiar with our annual report, mm -hmm. um, which I think is good. Uh, with regard to, you, know, you mentioned the balance of uh, you know, the, the legal and the, uh, uh, you know, the ethical issues. And I, I, I appreciate your points on the ethical issues and make sure I understand it correctly. Our, our largely focus on the commitment to stakeholders, being our consumers, and commitment to our communities, which is a critical part of the problem for our community. Um, with regard to financial, uh, the, the change, some of the changes you propose, I understand from one slide, it's differentiation. So we're not saying it's, we're not replacing things with traditional services that are menu, we're simply adding to the menu. Okay. Um, but also uh, essentially changing the, the image of the, uh, or further adding complexity to the image of the dollars per trade. What you know, are there some financial negatives or risks there as well? Um, well, by broadening our consumer base, we think that this will help increase our revenues. In 2003, <coughs> we say in our 10K, under the footnote, that our revenues have increased in part because of the solid initiatives that we've taken. So this is, help, this is a healthy option that we've implemented that has helped increase our revenues. So we are, this will benefit our shareholders because it will increase our profitability by adding in more healthy options. And the financial, the financial plan that we propose of restructuring the plan comes at a smaller cost to us. And we want to emphasize that just by changing a couple of the things that we have going, we can affect more change in the community. And the benefit that the community will receive far exceeds any cost that we will incur. Because traditionally we spend, we spend $1.5 billion a year on marketing. And Adjusting our marketing strategy, where we already have money allotted for, will allow us to do a lot. Well, it'll make us. It'll allow us to do a lot of good with a little bit of change. Mm. Does that answer your question? Yes. Okay. That's good. Um, on the salad issue, I guess I understand that a burger is perceived as fairly low in food. I find us in a more compromising position ethically that we've produced a salad that's professed to be somewhat healthy that has more calories than the Big Mac. And I actually perceive as having greater liability if someone switches to the <coughs> salad thinking it's less caloric and, and, and further his point the problem persists, uh, that to have a true diversified menu you need to have, we need to have food that is really in fact walks the talk. Um, as a parent of a, a three and five year old, I go to McDonald's and I would perceive the salad to be somewhat a healthier option than the burger. I still choose the burger because that's why I go to McDonald's. Um, and, and addressing the issue of trying to get my five year old to eat an apple or a carrot at McDonald's versus a French fry is certainly a parental challenge. Uh, in most cases, they're focused on the Happy Meal toy. Um, but certainly, to get true diversity in the menu, the content of the now present perceived healthy foods would be an item we should go after quickly because that's a formulary change and the market is already in place. Uh, so I guess that's more of an observation than it is a question. My other question is what are our competitors doing, Wendy's, Carl Jr., Burger King in the same arena, and what kind of market analysis data do we have? Are we ahead of the game here? Are we in front of the parade? Are we behind the parade? Or are we just trying to feel our way compared to our competitors? We are the most visible front for <coughs> creating healthy options. But if you walk into Wendy's, you'll see their, their information is a little more readily available. They, they're they actually marketing the salad option a little more heavily. But if you do look at the, the Wendy's salads actually have more fat and calorie. They're, they're worse than ours. They're worse than the ours. Wendy's salads, if you add all the components in, range from 500 to 750 calories. And to address your concern before, which is a very valid concern, we, we probably should have mentioned this in our report. Um, 
the, as far as the salad, maybe that has a lot to do with the education as far as letting people know that if you add this much dressing, you're going to get just as unhealthy of a meal as the Big Mac. So, to address that. Because the crispy chicken, huh. now, we're, now we're really putting KFC on the salad, and KFC's probably got a pretty, pretty similar problem. Right. Actually, the most calories in the salad come from the dressing, and we do offer a low calorie dressing, balsamic vinaigrette, which is only 15 calories. And we do, and on our placemat, we say when we're advertising our healthy options, we say salad with balsamic vinaigrette dressing. And what, what, what's the total caloric intake? This is probably with ranch, with high fat ranch content. What's the total calories on the, on the salad with the, the balsamic vinaigrette? Balsamic vinaigrette, you would subtract. So it would be close to 150 calories. So it's 80% of the calories in our salad come from the dressing? Come from the dressing, exactly. Okay. And so maybe we could implement smaller portions of salad dressing, like offer a half portion, maybe. And we could do that at relatively low cost. Sure. I mean, you could, you, we, we could leave the pricing structure at the consumer level the same, cut the dressing in half, and the numbers look better, and everything gets better. Right. So, do you want? Do we need to? Do you need, feel like we need to address any part of your question anymore? It was well, kind of complex. Well, I don't think the, the answer to the question is good. It, it highlights where some of the numbers come from, and, and the why is as important as the number. In many cases, more more so. Uh, we have some easy, what we call low hanging fruit options here to go after some things that uh, don't cost us any money at all, and some packaging changes and, and dressing. So that's. Those are the kind of things that executive managers like to see. What can we do quick and easy, sort of floor our demand for fast food in the society? Because uh, the probability is that we as a senior manager will be here a year or two from now. Uh, so we like to see the numbers prove quickly. Just as an aside, the, um, this sort of was a glitch in our program. The, uh, the chairman died on one day. Right. So and hence my point there on that, that reference. <laughs> Are, I guess the other question I have is, are we going after, to further his point about, are we going after true societal impact, or are we trying to make a reasonable good faith effort to protect ourselves in the liability world and be a little bit ahead of the game with our competitors? We feel that primarily we've been taking a, taking a role of placing the blame on, on consumer responsibility. And we want to recognize a little bit more that there is a strong correlation between obesity rates and the proliferation of the fast food industry. And we want to want to show to the society that maybe we didn't cause that, but we're going to help you out, and we're going to try to make it a better situation. So societal impact, I would say, is what we're going. And as a byproduct, we think that that will correspond with competitive edge. So part of our community education, is my last point, is we're going to get with the school districts in the, in the grammar schools, which is where the real focus group needs to be. <coughs> uh, I mean, my kindergartners learning about food groups right now, so when you focus the impact, you have to reach them at that, that level. You talk about a two two year olds know what the goblins is. Uh, you get into the four and five year olds, those are the ones who can begin to differentiate the difference. And there are some of Head Start programs for specifically low income areas because it's very hard to infiltrate the low income area schools just because of their structure, that some of the Head Start nonprofit organizations who are starting to offer parent, child, children, and classes on nutrition in hopes that they'll be able to, actually the goal of them right now is to avoid McDonald's, but if we got in with them and showed them how to work with McDonald's, hopefully that would have a positive impact as well. Thank you. Um, just one question. Uh, I know that several years ago uh, our company was uh, was, was, was caught up in a lot of controversy with environmental groups who were concerned about uh, packaging and how, how fast our packaging was contributing to filling up landfills. And at that time, we worked with some of the more uh, moderate environmental groups, actually let them come in and, and uh, to our restaurants and uh, evaluate uh, our processes. And, and with them, we, we uh, reached agreement on how we could reduce packaging and uh, Make everybody happy. Have you explored uh, that possibility in, in, in this particular issue in terms of working with uh, interest groups? We haven't, as pertinent to our specific issue, we haven't, but there's a section in our 
social responsibility report that outlines our dedication to conserving and protecting natural resources, encouraging environmental values, effectively managing solid waste, and ensuring accountability. And this, the social responsibility report was new in 2002. It's an initiative that we just started. And it talks about our structure, and it addresses how in 1990, we established a corporate environmental department and the ways that we're working with the community on that issue. Mm -hmm. is, there, is there a parallel here with this particular issue in terms of working with other groups, outside groups? I think within McDonald's, we have a lot of sponsorships and we have a lot of partnerships. But one of the main concerns was when we were reading through this, we noticed that there weren't very many partnerships as far as fighting obesity because we haven't yet identified our role in obesity. But if we take, we think that that's something we need to explore more. Probably, if we could get, if we could get the data, we would find that those that are obese, their their lifestyle and their diets at home are probably contributing greatly to. The situation. Um, people bring those problems out into society if they had which at home. I see it in the workplace. Mm -hmm. They bring the problem to work and then things go bad at work. And they're going to McDonald's because it's consistent and convenient with whatever they desire in the, in the, in the home. So the education aspect is, is critical at the young age because by the, the time the kids are five or six, you know, it's, it's done for you. Is there anything else we can address? Sure, I guess I have one last question. I appreciate you, you've advocated differentiating our menus and, and improving sort of a communication or information sharing where I can sort of, you know, are there other options to, to achieve the goal that, that we're here to discuss today, which is to sort of dis this. disconnect obesity <coughs> and fast food and McDonald's uh, identity with that. Uh, I guess one thought to consider would be you know, another brand of restaurants we might have. That, a different type of you know, menu. Are there other things like that you consider the first part of? Well, McDonald's as a corporation has been buying other companies that are focused more on healthier options. Um, one of the companies we own is Chipotle, which is a Mexican restaurant. And, and we're not you know, advertising low-fat brand muffins, but we are expanding outside of the fast food industry that where the food is healthier. But also, McDonald's as a brand image is really powerful right now. And currently, we, speaking to an expert in nutrition and food studies, Dr. Marianne Vessel, she has said that the fast food industry as it is now, without differentiation, is kind of reaching a plateau. People, because of the obesity epidemic, people are just kind of tapering off their consumption. Therefore, differentiation is key probably in maintaining our profitability in the future years. Where are they going if they're not going to fast food industry? Well, one company that has done very well is Subway, and they really market a healthy, healthy lifestyle. Yeah. Then they have the partnership with Atkins Diet, mm -hmm. which when we looked at our market structure would be very difficult to initiate within our company based on the content of most of our food. But we could we could look into bringing in some Atkins friendly options that would comply with like or the zone diet, comply with some of the diets that are out there. I mean, the Subway produces or on their menu or the billboard there talks about grams of fat mm -hmm. and particular sandwiches. It's, it's easy information to make a choice as you're walking through even to an uninformed consumer. Um, well, and that's a they built their business around that, so it isn't a cultural change for them. What we're talking about here is a dramatic cultural change, which obviously won't happen overnight. Uh, we have to walk a fine line in between accepting responsibility for obesity and trying to be part of a solution. And you can see that when you walk into one of our restaurants. There's, um, there's placemats on the trays, and the nutritional information is on the back, but on the front is a huge picture of french fries. Just <coughs> And it's you, you have to, to, you have to flip it over, you flip it over. So it's I, I, readily I had no idea there was text on the back side because by the time the, the ketchup gets smeared on the front right. side, I'm not likely to you know turn it over until I'm trying to peel it up for the ketchup. Exactly. So you can see the intrinsic differences in the company structure. Yeah, we probably that's another marketing thing that we could focus on is to change that that literature that uh, every consumer sees 
from living french fry to something more balanced. Right. And that's even better than some of our other competitors who you have to ask specifically. At Wendy's, we had to ask yeah. specifically to get nutritional facts. We went to Wendy's to ask for the, yeah, the nutritional facts. And they, like, they were like, what are you talking they about? Like, they laughed at us. They laughed at us. And then the one they gave us had the writing on it. So they're not readily available. And it was very poor. Well, certainly an open disclosure is better because you can never survive the cover-up. And if we're covering up something that is really egregious, in the end we lose. And all these are fine to legal to Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you.